Hello, welcome to another PlayStation Classic Bleem Sync Hack video. So this is for version 0 0.4. It can be any 0 0.4 version. It can be 0 0.40, well, I mean 0 0.4.0, 0 0.4.1. And the steps are the same. So the great thing about this version is that it has automatic scraps scraping of you know game data so you don't have to mess around with game i and i5 you can do that if you want if you want a bit more customization but you'll get that for you it will not only do that it will also get the what's what's that other file called the image file will get the the appropriate image as i'll show you very soon the other thing this is the windows based version if you want to check it out for Mac and Linux, I will have videos covering that as well. So the first thing you want to do is go to the Bleem Sync GitHub folder. Don't worry, I'll provide a link to the description. Ah, look at our old video from five days ago. It is appearing on Google. Fantastic. Okay, so now if you just go to releases, just download the latest version, 0.4.1. This tutorial is applicable for literally all 0.4 versions and potentially future versions as well. And just select the Windows 7 version right here. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not going to, you know, just waste time and just downloading it there. I've got it right here, so I'll delete this folder. So it's right here. Before we do anything, what we want to do, make sure you have a USB stick, maximum compatibility, use a USB 2.0 stick. I've had bad luck with USB 3.0. Some people have had you know, good luck, some people haven't. But, you know, for maximum compatibility, use USB 2.0. Once it's connected, you want to right click it, go to format. And then from here, you want to select FAT32. Allocation size is default allocation size. Make sure your volume label is Sony. So, or uppercase S-O-N-Y. Select quick format, click start. This will take no longer than, I'd say, five seconds or so. And then we're ready to actually start putting the files onto our USB stick. Okay, something that's a bit more than five seconds, my bad. So this zip file, you want to extract this. So if you right click it, and then if we just, you know, click extract, or you can use another tool like WinRAR or 7-Zip, but I just want to show you the built-in, you know, tools that you can use. So, it, so it's applicable for everyone. And yeah, we, we want to show it. So this is just going to extract it. This will, won't take very long at all. While we wait, I'll have a sip of my drink, which is green tea. Okay, so 10 more seconds left. It is just extracting the files. And we are done. Now, fantastic. You want to grab all of these files, copy them, Go to your USB stick that you've just freshly formatted, paste them onto here. So just wait patiently, shouldn't take too long. Don't worry, it's not gonna take, you know, three minutes and 30 seconds. It will, I'm hoping, will speed up very shortly. Because when I did it before, doing this video, you know, just to test it, it didn't take that long. Okay. So just waiting for this to copy over. This is another reason I want better compatibility with USB 3.0 sticks. It's not about the reading side on the PlayStation Classic. Because I've got a PS3 that's hacked and I use an external USB 2.0 hard drive. You know, also the ports are USB 2.0 anyway. So using, using USB 3.0 will be you know, wasted for the most part. And you know, I don't have an issue with the loading. It's actually faster than CD. But the problem is writing to USB 2.0. It takes a bit of time, as you can see. Okay, so next step is to, is to basically set up our game. So if you go to the games folder, you've got a couple of folders called 1 and 2. Every time you want to add a new game, what you need to make sure is you create a new folder here, just increment it by one. So we got one and two. If you have three games, you'll have one, two, three. If you have four games, you have one, two, three, four, five. I think you get the picture. So let's just say if we just go to number one. In here, make sure you have a folder called game data. And in here is where you put your game files. 
My thinking, is there already a game here? No, because if you look, the bin and the Q files are zero kilobyte. They're just basically showing you the format of what your games need to be in, you know, the structure of everything. So what you want to do is just delete everything. Delete everything. We can leave the P PCSX file though, because that's just generic. So delete everything else. And now if I copy over Crash Bandicoot, copy this over so this is going to take a little bit of time because it is used to be 2.0 and it's almost 600 megabytes but i'll you know explain a few things while this is doing i've named it crash bandicoot.bin and crash bandicoot.q in the older versions of bleem sync you actually had to name it you know this identifier so in the case of the ntsc NTSC, yeah, NTSC version of Crash Bandicoot, it will be SCUS-94900, you had to do that, that was a requirement for, you know, for maximum compatibility, now you don't, you don't even have to name it, you know, what the game is, you can name it Halabalula, you know, or whatever you want, you could, you know, put your name on there, you could put pizza and mashed potatoes, I'm going to have some pizza after I've done this video, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, but going back to this, you can name the file wherever you want. The reason I think you should name it, you know, what the game is, like Crash Bandicoot or Tekken 3, is when, you know, you might have 25 games on your USB stick, and when you're, you know, managing the folders on your computer, just having a look at what folders which, you can just quickly go into the game data folder for that particular number, say, oh, that's the Crash Bandicoot game, or that's the Tekken 3 game, or that's the, you know, Spiral game, or what, whatever it is. It's just an easy way of knowing what's, you know, what. Okay, so almost done. So again, these can be named whatever you want, but it is totally up to you. You can have multi bin file games as well and you can just put multiple files there and you'll handle the same process as well so almost done almost done then there's actually only just one last step left on the computer and then we'll switch over to the playstation classic and i'll show you how to plug it in you know the order of plugging in because i'm sure you know how to plug a usb stick in but there's a particular order you need to do it in to make sure it works and almost there, almost there, 30 seconds left, 30 seconds left, and then we are done with this little, you know, the long part of it. And I've just been talking just because I didn't want to really do any editing in between. I wanted to show you as much as possible and, you know, make sure I'm not skipping out any steps because that's one thing I hate when I see a video online and it's a tutorial video and steps will be skipped out. There'll be a lot of assumptions made which won't be mentioned. Okay, so this is all copied now. The last step you want to do is go to the BleemSync folder. Scroll down to where you get the BleemSync.exe. Double click this and this will just generate a database file and sort out all our games. Da -da. And as you can see, game INI doesn't exist. So don't worry, even though we deleted it, it retrieved it automatically. So if we go to games, go to one, game data. As you can see, there's more than three files now. When we left it, we copied the Q and the bin files. We had the default pcsx.config, which, you know, we just want to leave that as default. But we didn't have the game on and We didn't have the PNG. If we open up the PNG, it is the correct from now the correct cover art and if we open the game i and i file 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 use any text editor i'm using sublime what is it doing down here i'll, I'll just use you know the star button and the up to maximize it so it's got the title it's got the correct publisher the correct year the number of players and the disc name as well just something to bear in mind any modifications that you do to your games whether that's adding a new game i'll say let's say removing the game or you know modifying some of you know the file names always go back go to bleemsync run the bleemsync.exe every single time you do you know any sort of modification then plug it back into your playstation classic and that's it the steps that's all you have to do so just a recap once you've done it up to this point all you have to do is create a new folder you know increase the number by one so the next one will be free this is just a blank one this will just say tony hawks and i'm just going to leave it but you can remove that in there so you just increase it by one so if you have four games the next folder will be five and in there 
you would have a game data folder. In there, you place your bin and Q files. And just make sure you have this pcsx.config file. You can just copy and paste this because this is the same for all games. And then you go back, go to BleemSync, run the BleemSync.exe, wait for it to you know, configure the database, and then you're all good to go. So let's switch over to the PlayStation Classic, and I'll see you there right now. Okay, so what you want to do is with the PlayStation Classic, make sure it's all you know plugged in. You got a controller plugged into slot one, the power lead. You got the HDMI, everything plugged in. Honestly, did these are the official steps to get Bleem Sync working. I've tried it where you know when the console is in a slightly different state, and I found it does work. But I'm just going to show you the recommended steps. So what you want to do is unplug the power cable, and now. You want to get your USB stick, make sure it is USB 2.0 because I have a USB 3.0 here that I tried. I tried a couple of, a, of other 3.0 sticks. They did not work. I read online some people have got some USB 3.0 sticks to work, but I would highly recommend 2.0 just because the compatibility seemed to be better. Okay, so with the USB 2.0 stick, you want to put it in the controller to port because it is literally just a USB port. So let me, it's a little awkward with one hand. Hopefully I don't break the stick. That's the PSTV light that's just turned on. And now you want to plug the power back in. Okay, so now that the power is plugged back in, Wait for the original light to turn back on. Now the, it's it's sort of you know not the nicest on this phone. Actually, you can see the orange light a lot better now. Okay, so with the orange light on, you want to click the power button, and if it flashes green and orange a few times, that's when you know the hack is successful. And what you'll get is this Sony Interactive Entertainment. You're actually abruptly stop and go to something else now you will get your bleem sync hacked menu and on here will be all your games so we've got crash bandicoot this tony hawks pro skater 2 isn't an actual game it's just basically an empty bin q folder with a you know this image on there it's just to show you the format of copying your games over but this one is a legit one as i showed you on the you know the first part of the tutorial on the computer if i click x on here now this will load and save states work you can gain to the secret menu you can change the frame rate you can change the region you can you know do all of that stuff you can add scan lines if you really want to as well so let me just get it up to the point where we're actually playing it and then I will end this little part here. Okay, so we got Crash Bandicoot. So, um, as you can see, the controller is connected to PlayStation Classic. Cl no, classic, classic. Click X, and it goes onto the menu. Insanity Beach. Can't wait for Crash Team Racing coming out on PlayStation 4 and you know all the other systems as well. Let me just show you working. X and square. Okay, so that's it for setting up Bleem Sync on your PlayStation Classic. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message and I will assist you through the process. And as usual, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome hacky video.